I'm super, super grateful for, for you guys um, and gals. <laughs> Don't want to leave the ladies out. I, I'm grateful because uh, purpose. Purpose. I'm grateful because I'm beginning to know more about my purpose in life. And because I now know what my life is about, I'll give a little bit of a detail about that. There's a man in this room I, I remember that uh, interviewed me. Mark, how you doing? Um, he asked me a couple of questions uh, during a, a business interview years ago. See, I'd already worked for this company, but I was uh, applying for a higher position. How many of you ever like to go to a little higher level than where you're currently at? So it's interesting, that particular position I, that, I was, that I had applied for, I actually, me, John, did not want it. But after spending time with the Lord, God really put it on my heart. I mean, when I'm talking about spending some time, I want to, you know, I, I, it was about a three-day period of time where this position opportunity had been suggested to me by uh, the predecessor that I had who was moving on to a, another, another position. And he said, you need to apply for this. And I said, no, I don't. He said, you're the one that's qualified. I said, I'm not even the, I'm not even the assistant, you know, in this, in your current position. Nowhere close. And he goes, well, you're the one that's most qualified. And I said, thank you for that. I remember leaving work that day and talking to God, said, having this conversation with God, telling him, thank you for what I have. I'll just cut right to the chase. What I had was comfortability. I knew how to do my job day in and day out. I made a very comfortable living uh, relative to my means of living throughout my life. Um, I was, I could go in, oftentimes I could get done in seven hours based on data that I knew that other people were performing what they could do in more hours. Um, I could just get in there and almost do it without thinking, really enjoying my life, enjoying what I did. And then this, it was an opportunity, but this, this uh, request from this person that said, you need to do this came up. And I'm like, mm, no, I don't. So as I was talking to the Lord, I said, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for this position that you led me into. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really what I was saying is, I have no desire to do something at a higher level. I didn't want that responsibility. I, there was just, I was just comfortable. And I got done praying. I felt pretty good about myself. And uh, I remember the Lord asking me a question in my heart. And that question was this, did you ask me about this job? I already knew the answer. It was no. I was thanking him for what I currently had, not the job opportunity with, you know, a lot of people would see as promotion. Certainly there was a raise in pay and, you know, and, and responsibility. But I remember during that, that time spent with the Lord over this weekend, I mean, I really, really, because when, when he said, God spoke in my heart and said, did you ask me? The answer was no. And I knew that I was in a position that I needed to put that before the Lord because he had spoke to me. I couldn't just leave it open-ended. I couldn't just go home on a Friday, which that was happened to be a Friday, come back on a Monday and just be the same person. There was something that I had to deal with. So I just got in God's presence and I started going, man, Lord, I don't know that I want to do this. And I spent time like, oh my gosh, just almost felt like a full week of hours in a weekend. And that Sunday night before I went back into work, God told me that, that uh, not only would I go in for the position, uh, I was praying to him after this long weekend and going, thank you, Lord, that if I get this position, he interrupted me. And he said, it's when. 
you get this position. Like, wow, okay. So when I get this position, I thank you that you'll guide and counsel me. So I went to, went to work that Monday morning and um, I uh, began to seek the Lord about how I should go about this. And I mentioned Mark's name because he's, he's a dear brother in the Lord. He used to be my boss. But he's a dear brother in the Lord, which is more important to me. And um, I went and seen my, the, the person that I reported to at the time who suggested that I apply for his position because he was leaving. And he said, did you go talk to Mark? And I said, no. And he goes, well, I'm going to be leaving in just a few days, so you need to go. And I said, no. And I, I knew that I wasn't supposed to just put myself out there. And I'm like, well, then how, how are you supposed to know? Mark ended up coming up to me uh, a couple of days later. And he said, John, um, I've been meaning to talk to you. It's towards the end of the day. And uh, he said, when he was walking by my office, he says, it's kind of late in the day, but maybe, maybe not today. But we, we kind of just kept walking together and went into his office and sat down. And uh, he said, um, he said your, uh, your name got brought up for this position. See, I'd never put my name, me personally put it in the hat, but my name got brought up. And I, I knew that that was the, the other person that, that was in the position that I would be applying for. So in this conversation, Mark asked me some questions, you know, strengths and weaknesses. And he asked me, you know, what is, what is some of the, uh, you know, greatest accomplishments that I had. And I remember saying this in the interview, giving my life to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now, again, I'll reiterate, Mark was my boss then, <laughs> not my brother in the Lord. But I had this confidence inside of me because God spoke to me and said, this is yours. But again, I didn't want it. I was just being led of the Lord going into this position. So the reason I'm sharing this with you today is that that I want to highlight what you want for yourself and what God wants for you. And the reason I say this as a believer, because so many people I've heard them say, and I've said this before, Lord, if it be your will, right? Or there's a dilemma, a question, or something that we need answers to, and we're praying to God about this. And I'm talking to people that are saved. And if you're not saved, just say, Jesus, come into my heart. <laughs> Get saved. Um, it's really, I won't dive into it, but it's really that simple. But it has to come from a place in your heart. And once you are walking with God, I think our greatest challenge is what does God want to do with you? Right? And oftentimes people are hesitant about walking deeper with the Lord because they think he might ask them to do something that they may not want to do. Why wouldn't you want to do if you've given your life to God, been reconciled by his son, Jesus Christ? Why wouldn't you want to do something that he wanted you to do? So sometimes we won't even ask him this question because we think we got to give up something fun. I have some great news for you. Walking with God is fun. It's also funny. It's also very peaceful. There are times that it's very serious. They're very, you're really contemplating the things of life. And you're walking with God. And oftentimes we come to him when there's big things coming up where we don't have answers. And we're like, Lord, if it be your will. So this is why I'm, I brought up that testimony. See, my will wasn't bad. I was comfortable in what I was doing. I I described the money that I was making relative to money that I personally made in my prior life. I, I, I was just, I could do, there, man, things were pretty good. Why would I want more? I didn't. It was, I was okay with that. And it's not okay to be comfortable with comfortability if you want to go to higher places. It's okay to be comfortable with comfortability if you don't. I would suggest, I would probably suggest that if a person is, I'm just fine with where I'm at, there, there's, if you chase that down, there's probably some root fear as to why you don't want to go to a higher level. So 
I'm sharing this because I think this is one of the areas walking with God as a believer that we can really struggle with. What you want and what he wants. If it be your will, Lord, and sometimes we're praying this because we're like, I really want something better. I want this problem to go away. And But whatever your will is, and sometimes we're saying that going, well, if it doesn't turn out the way I want, okay, I guess I'm going to be okay with that. But I really want it to go this way. And sometimes it's the reverse. I'm really comfortable with where I'm at. I don't really want to push forward for more. But it's in the place that you ask the Lord that he can begin to start to do something with your life. So all of that I just described is an action, an action. What do I mean by that? Like a, like a verb, like you are actually partaking and doing something. And the reason it's important to grasp that, I believe, is there's sometimes we just want the Lord to pull the strings. And if you read about the life of Jesus and the people that were ministered to him, there's a common denominator that people that received his ministry, whether it be healing, whether it be joy, whether it be love, whether it be his compassion, there was this common denominator with every single person that had a positive manifestation of God's power in their life because of this Jesus. This common denominator was this. They went to him. People went to him. People were seeking him. It's super powerful. The reason I say this is because sometimes Jesus had to minister outside of the city walls because there was a there was a force there, a religious force, that didn't want anything to do with him. And so he had to operate outside of the cities. Scripture calls it sometimes deserted places. And the multitudes came to these places. So they had to go outside of where their comfortability was, living where they were living, doing what they were doing, to seek this one that might manifest a change in their life that they were hoping for. They actually had to do something. I, I really, in my life, I like to go, what's the next nail that I need to hit? Because <laughs> I got some loose boards in my life. And I'm willing to do that. And so the reason I share this is because there are things that we do. Today, October 31st, 2021, it's, um, it's Halloween. Today I'm dressed up as... The reason I say that is there's so many people today in the days preceding this day and the days following that will put on costumes. We were invited to a birthday party uh, the other night, and it was interesting. I, I, we were invited some time back, and I knew instantly the Lord put it on my heart. You need to, you need to go to this. I'm like, all oh. right. And it wasn't because I didn't want to hang out with the people that were there. It was that I was uncomfortable putting on a costume. And so many years I think back that I would go and I would just, what are you? <laughs> Dude, I'm me. <laughs> this is what I chose to wear today. I don't have stuff on. And then there was other times I'd go and like, God, just throw on some camouflage. And what are you? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a hunter. Woo, that was creative. Yeah, <laughs> this guy. So I, uh, I knew that I was supposed to go, but then I had to deal with this uncomfortability about what was I going to wear. And I, there was already a question that I wasn't just going to just walk in and be who I was. And so I needed to put something on. And so I just like searched in, inwardly. And I had this, um, this antelope styrofoam hat. That's what I put on. And I painted my face black, put on some tan clothes. Why? Because antelope have tan clothes on. And I went there, and as I went there, I observed uh, many different things. One, you can hear my, my grandson in the back. I spend lots of time with him willingly every week. 
He knows me well. He knows my voice. When he saw my black face, black camel paint all over, and it's pretty cool. I rubbed extra in some areas of my beard so the grays disappeared, but it was just like this blob of blackness in this antelope hat. He just looked at me, not scared, but not knowing. He's like, and I said, Mateo, it's Grandpa. He's like, that's not Grandpa. <laughs> that's not Grandpa. See, I put on something different than who he knew. And so there was a disconnect. And then I began to realize, I started like really observing this. It's like, can't you just go to a costume party and just, no, I can't. Honestly, I got to start watching. I started realizing that most people, I believe, put something on that at some point, they, they're willing to put this costume on. And some fragment of what they're putting on, they identify with. Think about it. How many of you have already dressed up or will dress up? for Halloween, right? Something that you put on, you were in agreement with it. You're like, ah, it's not like somebody chained you down and decided to put this on. We might ask questions. What do you think I should be? Or what do, how am I going to, and we try to get, there's whatever ultimately you put on, you identify with it in some way. In essence, you accept it. I began to watch people and it, I thought, this is interesting. I could see some of how they were dressed, some of the characteristics of these people, including me. Antelope. What am I, some kind of, well, I'm, I'm tan. That was one way you, I could identify. But I started thinking about the nature of an antelope. They're very curious creatures. They're very observant, and oftentimes they observe things from a distance. They won't just come right up to you, they'll watch things from a distance. So, in essence, we put on these things. And as a believer, the scripture tells us there are things that we should put on and things that we should put off. We're not supposed to just let things happen. Have you ever heard the phrase, the devil made me do it? It's a cop out. It is. Devil can't make you do anything. You've heard me share many times, God told me this or gave me some instruction. But that doesn't mean that it's automatically going to happen. God can't make you do anything either. So we are the ones that either put on or put off something. So if you have some issues or some question marks or some blank spaces in your life about who it is that you're supposed to be in your walk with the Lord, then there's opportunity through submission and yielding of yourself to ask him. So I want to read with you finally some scripture and the Lord just shared this phrase with me this morning. Who's running the show? Well, you are, God. I'll tell you his answer. No, he's not. Some good happened in your, in your life, maybe. How did that happen? People say things that quote scriptures, and God is able to make all things, turn all things for good. And we just stop right there. But it's what we do. Who's running the show? In Romans 8, that chapter really defines a, a key makeup of human beings. I've shared before that the scripture describes us as a three-part human beings, three-part makeup. Spirit, soul, body. In the beginning, God created man, the body, from the dust of the ground. You can imagine just getting some clay and some pottery, putting it together, and just laying it there. 
But then he breathed the spirit of life and man came alive. I'll give you another kind of more serious note. If you've ever seen a loved one, enjoyed them, and then they pass from this realm into the heavenly realm, and those that have seen the body, once that transition of their spirit leaving and their mind leaving, their soul leaving, the body looks different. It's physical appearance, but there's something that if you're honest with yourself, is just, it's like it's not them. You're a spirit. You have a body and a soul. So who's running the show here with you on earth as a believer? In Romans 8, it says, to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If somebody asks you, would you just rather do without peace in your life? I think for most of us, the easy answer is, no, I, I kind of like when things are peaceful. So you are vividly aware of when the absence of peace is present. And in that moment, you can ask, who's running the show. You can say, well, I would have been fine if this person would have said that and they, they stole my peace. They made me mad. Hmm. Do, do people have the ability to make you do something? Things they do might make you react, but you have to choose to be offended. You have to choose to be made mad. And I'm not, I'm not you know... I'm not saying that what people are doing is wrong and that you don't have a reason to be disappointed, but the disappointment and the things that it causes you and the, the residue that it leaves on you has to be taken, meaning you have to take it. To be carnally minded is death. That's the opposite of peace. And what it means, it doesn't mean a physical death. It can lead into that. But to be carnally minded, I think, is important to have an understanding of what carnal is or the flesh is. Romans 8 talks a lot about the flesh and the spirit, and that's the two components in which I was speaking about. Who's running the show? Your nature and who you are or your God-led spirit? Because you're both at any given time but only one can make decisions. I want to share again about carnal, the word carnal, the word carnally, the word flesh, often as it relates to in the New Testament. Sarx, S-A-R-X is the Greek. I love the definition. The flesh, this is the definition, denotes mere human nature the earthly nature of man apart from divine influence and therefore prone to sin and opposed to God. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I like, I like to, to do that because when I have these issues in front of me, these things, it's like that decision about what I wanted to do in that opportunity for a position at that place that I worked. It wasn't like, you know, it was a bad thing to get promoted. I just was comfortable with where I was at, but I put it before the Lord because my human nature didn't want that because I was comfortable and things were going good. And if I signed up for more, first of all, it came down to identity thing. When I really chased it down, are you qualified? Interestingly enough, Mark shared something with me that day. He said, John, as I go through the list of qualifications and check the boxes, have you run a multi-million dollar business before in sales or had any experience? No. <laughs> have you had any training? Have you had any schooling collegiately? I mean, he just went down the list. No, 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 no. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I thank you very much. But he said, what's important to me is this one 
desire. This one box, it's desire. And you have a desire to do this. And I remember in my mind thinking at that moment, I don't know that I voiced the words to him and said, Mark, I want this job. I did it because God did it. And so this is how God can orchestrate things. So I didn't have all the natural qualifications, but I was supposed to go into a different level. And in that moment, I was listening to what God told me, but vividly aware of what my human nature, my carnal or fleshy man did not want. And I remember leaving that day, Mark having told me, I'm going to give you an opportunity. He said, we'll try this for six months. And I said, you know, before six months is over, I'll know. I'm not going to wait to see what's going to happen. I'll know. And I sat in that and answered these questions, and I had confidence. I wasn't nervous. When I left and drove away, oh, man. And I mean M-A-N. My natural man kicked in big time. What have you done? What did you sign up to do? Fear took out the breath. I actually, my physical temperature completely dropped. I lost all, like, a sense of awareness. Here I'm driving down a highway at 60 miles an hour. What did you do? But I remember just days earlier hearing the voice of the Lord in my heart. You will get this. You will do this. And I remember saying in that moment in prayer, yes, Lord, I'll do it. And in that present moment, driving away from this interview that I had confidence in, I was completely void of that faith. But because I was anchored in what God told me to do, I knew that everything would be okay. And it, it was. The reason I'm sharing this is because I believe there's such rich opportunity in any given moment, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and have accepted him into your heart, to know that we should be putting on the things of the Lord and be willing to put away the things that we think we might want. That's living by the proddings of the Holy Spirit guiding your spirit to make any decision. I saw some people at this party and I couldn't help but think about myself when I used to really party. <laughs> I saw the little kids running around and it reminded me of when I was little running around while the big people really partied. And I saw these two worlds going on that of the children running around having fun, dressed up, and that of the big people. Some of them really partying. Not that, not that there's, you know, there's only a problem with drinking if you have a problem with drinking. Uh, one way to filter that is, does the drink have you or do you have the drink? That's just something you can ask yourself if you're willing. But, I felt drawn to the children, and I remember thinking back when I was a child, being in some of those same atmospheres, and the other night was so light. It was pretty, pretty good for the most part um, compared to what I saw when I grew up. And I just was drawn to the kids, and then I was just watching and listening, and I had to really kind of filter and turn inward to what I was going to do in, the, in just those moments of partying. And the reason I'm sharing this is because every day there's stuff going on that we can search and go, who am I? What is ruling? Who's running the show with what's going on presently in front of me? The spirit of God or my spirit? And the more that you press into that and are willing to do that, the more that you're going to get the good things of God in your life. 
And the more that you don't, and you just do things because that's the way you've always done them, and they may not be bad. It may be an exact place that I described, being comfortable with what you're doing. Nothing bad is happening. You're just doing it because that's what you do. If you just ask the Lord, Lord, I've just been doing this every day without thinking. Nothing bad's happening. But do you want me to continue to do this? Should I stop doing this? Or should I just, what should I do, Lord? And listen, this is how you can rewire yourself. Scripture calls that repentance, meaning changing the way that you think. And that's all Jesus wanted. He said, repent. Change the way that you think. But when he said that, it just doesn't happen. It's those that come to him. So I'm speaking to the heart of believers. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's more for you in your life. And there's some areas we're not pushing more because we're comfortable where we're at and because there's a fear of giving up something that you think you need. But God is always good. God is always a God of increase. God is always going to take you to a higher place. And anytime you go to a higher place and elevation, yes, there's some uncomfortability that comes with it. But that's a good thing. That's a great place to be in. Don't be carnally minded, meaning... Just do things the way that you think you should do them. Void of the influence, the divine influence of God wanting to speak to your heart. My son, one of my sons at this party, um, we were just sitting around and it was kind of loud and he asked me this, this question. He <laughs> thought it was kind of interesting. In fact, I had to call him the next day because it was on my heart to apologize to him because I was pretty disconnected and I was in and out of the conversation. And, but this is a question. He says, so dad, would you describe yourself as an introvert or, you know, an extrovert? That's an interesting question as I'm processing all the stuff that I tried to describe, looking at people in their costumes and going, how does that relate to their identity? And seeing the little kids running around and all this stuff. And I'm a antelope and, you know, and what, and he, are you an introvert? Like, no, man, I'm wearing an antelope costume. And then I really began to process what it was that he was, what he was asking, because he was making an observation of me as I'm watching people and asking a question to which he already knew the answer. And I kind of did, but I had to kind of dig around for it a little bit. I am in many ways, an introvert. And one of, the, one of the definitions or one of the sentences in the definition of introvert, uh, it says, it's very likely you're an introvert if you have a rich inner world that we tend to feed on when we're alone. A rich inner world that we tend to feed on or to feed, excuse me, when we're alone. I do that. I started to process this. Why do I get kind of weirded out in parties and stuff? Because I'm not a surface level guy. What do I mean by that? Hey, how's wear a nice costume? What's going on? It doesn't mean I can't have fun. It's just, I can only do that for so long because my heart is, what's your heart? My heart is, how is life? And I realize when we go to some of these things that people are just putting on stuff. You know, and again, there's nothing wrong, but it's once you start talking to people, you can start seeing that there's some things that are going on. Oh, man, there's some things going on. So I'm a little uncomfortable, but I can't completely extract myself out of those interactions. But I have to have an awareness of why that I'm uncomfortable with that. And so therefore, when I am alone, I feed on the Lord. I I realize that there are things and hobbies and stuff that I, I really like to do, but oftentimes I don't. I don't really, it's like, I don't know if any of you guys know I like to shoot bows. I, I probably haven't mentioned that before. But um, I don't shoot and, and do stuff with a lot of people. There are some of these events where people will go, hey, let's just go have fun and fling some arrows. I, I got to get a little better at that and have some fun doing that. And, and I have salted some of that in. But I typically am like, I'm either honing or learning or, or doing something and, and on, my, on my own. 
And so then when people come and they have a question, I can feed them on that area. So my heart for God is the same way that I feed on his word. And I didn't do that for people. First, I did it for me decades ago, a couple decades ago and change because I was lost. And I found out, even though it wasn't Halloween, that everywhere that I went, I was putting something different on. Some form of identity. Isn't it funny? During interviews, what do you do? You put on your best. Sometimes you really highlight your qualifications. Don't you? Come on. You put on your best clothes. You... You, t- you talk about your accomplishments. You're very resistant to talk about your failures. Very resistant. Why? Because if they know, I might not get that which I want. So I have to put on. But I could easily take off the interview clothes, and man, I could just rage and party. I could put on that. Oh, boy, if I had time. You would go, you did that? I'd be like, yeah. And what I'm grateful for is that as I continue to walk with the Lord, I haven't arrived anywhere. In fact, I now have revelation that you will never arrive. At least I won't. Constantly pressing forward, constantly learning. And once you learn, you realize how little that you know. It's a great place to be. And as I continue to press forward, I, 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 I think about what is the Spirit of the Lord telling me and what am I doing? Every day I have some of these challenges. Every day I probably say something or have some form of action towards one of my best friends in the entire world, my wife. Every day I probably do something that I wished I could take back, but I'm constantly pressing, and after 30 years of marriage, I know that it's just going to keep getting better, but it's going to take work and some uncomfortability, and I don't need to put on what I want, I just have to trust in the Lord, and I'm working through this and navigating through this. I hope that you can really extract who you are. You have your nature, and then there's a nature of God, and if you've invited him through by asking Jesus to come into your heart, these two can live along each other, in harmony to take you to a great place. And when we're lacking peace, we feel the residue of life. Typically, we've been feeding our human nature, and it becomes more dominant and takes us away from the things that God wants us to have. And often it starts off as innocent. See, if I would have made a decision years ago and said, nope, I'm staying in this position. It's likely that I could have been still at that same place because I made a decision. I'm comfortable with where I'm at. I'm good. We have the opportunity to do something. God can't do anything in your life unless you invite him in. The devil can't have any power over your life unless you let him in. So... Put on, put on the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.22, it's a wonderful, wonderful chapter if you ever want to read something about just good everyday life and what you should be doing. The book of Ephesians, all of it's good, but chapter 4 is wonderful. tells us exactly what we should do. Verse 22 says that you put off concerning your former conduct. As I was at that party, I was aware that there were some things that I used to do, and I was glad that I don't do them anymore. Put off the former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind in that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Put on, put off. Put on, put off. So if you're going to go to a party tonight and dress up, have fun. Have fun. 
But while you're doing it, there's opportunity to be aware of what God wants you to do in those moments. I had this thought when I dressed up like an antelope and put that black paint all over my face that my grandson would be a little bit apprehensive. So in preparation, I brought some wipes and I couldn't wait till that party was over and wipe that stuff off and just look at him in his eyes. And when I did, hmm, he knew it was me because of my voice, but there was something there that when he saw the image of who I believe he believes his grandfather is, there was a deeper connection that happened in that moment. So the moral of the story is, if you're a believer, put on the new man and how you're created. And it's very simple to do. It's a very simple decision. Sometimes it's pretty hard to do. When somebody cuts you off in traffic, think about it. You know your buttons. Maybe you're victorious in traffic. But when somebody tells you to take out the trash, to do this, to do that, you're like, hey, I'll do that one. Put on the new man. Don't tell me what to do. That's the old man. You have a choice, and all you got to do, you're not going to win them all. <laughs> but just put that decision out there, and good things will start happening. So that was your Halloween message. <laughs> Who's running the show? You or you created in the image of God? And I hope you got something out of that. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we have an opportunity to put on what God says and honor him. Thank you, Lord. We are honored to sow seed into your ministry. We thank you, Lord, that as we continue to do that according to your word, that there's going to be good food, good word, good provision for those in your church of safe haven. With a cheerful and glad heart, we do this. In the name of Jesus, everybody said, amen. 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 Praise the Lord.